Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Our focus uh, uh, in the, this lecture and the next one is going to be on innovation. So, of course, innovation uh, is an important subject and it is a very popular subject. Now, everybody talks of innovation, but our focus is going to be innovation in emerging markets and I am going to first uh, define emerging markets and then uh, look at uh, what kinds of innovations are needed for the growth in the emerging markets arena. And also, uh, we'll, I will use the ecosystem framework to find out all the uh, possible innovations and so that once you have a company or you have a vertical, then if you want to study the possible innovations and uh, how they can co-evolve and everything will lead to a blockbuster industry, uh, then that can be studied using what we are doing today. So, innovation by itself in a product or a process is not very useful. It requires lots of other things for being, for being successful. So, we are going to deal with this in the next uh, lecture, in this lecture on the next one. So, we will first as I said, uh, we will first define emerging markets and define what is called successful innovation. I mean, there are lots of innovations that came in, but uh, do they lead to successful industries and so that they are useful to humanity. And I will talk about the innovation framework and the innovations in the supply chain resources, governments and delivery mechanisms. These four are the are the components of our ecosystem and I will give innovations, uh, uh, examples of innovation in the telecom growth and we will conclude. So, here uh, this particular picture is the one that shows you both the developed and innovation in the emerging markets. So, the red ones which is India, China and several other uh, this one, the so called South are the emerging markets and uh, the developed markets are the United States, Europe and so on. So, what are emerging markets? <coughs> emerging markets are, are countries having high disposable, increasing disposable income, large young populations and market with characteristics as high growth, high potential, high risk and as a consequence of economic liberalization. So, this uh, particular definition is important because countries like India, China, uh, the so-called BRIC countries, uh, Brazil and Russia, they have basically high populations, but the 50 percent of the, these populations are young. In other words, they are between 80, they are below 25 years of age and the markets are high growth because the industrialization has just started and that led to high retail and it has high potential and also high risk. High risk because if you do not do <coughs> the marketing well, if you do not produce the right kind of products, then you are likely to fail. And these labor economies have liberalized or liberalized only recently. They were all protected economies uh, like India and so the, the liberalization has led to the MNCs, the multinational companies coming into the country and also it has, uh, it has led to a lot of growth. So, emerging markets have young populations, one has to take these into consideration. Young population and their market with high growth, high potential as well as high risk and they are just coming out, they are just getting liberalized. And so, what kind of products and services they need and at what cost and can you make them available 
and so on. So, that is the issues. Most of these are protected economies for decades and have poor inf industrial infrastructure. For example, the industrial infrastructure are the clusters, the ports, the airports, roads, roads not for uh, just people traveling, but roads for the trucks, heavy duty trucks traveling and also uh, the trains, air transport and so on and also shipping. So, this industrial infrastructure and the vehicles for transfer of freight is very important and they have poor industrial infrastructure. So, government liberalized these economies to attract foreign investments because the economics takes over politics and in manufacturing services and infrastructure. They have introduced initiatives such as public private partnership, it is also called PPP and also special economic zones and they have given lot of SOPs uh, to these companies so that they can enter into the country and uh, do their business here. So, this is so called business friendliness of uh, these countries to foreign this one. This is basically to attract investments because any manufacturing or service infrastructure takes lot of money and these countries which are just liberalizing they do not have the governments do not have the money to develop the infrastructure. So, they enter into private partner public private partnerships and also just create SHRs and ask people to set up their own shops. Well, the result of this will be employment creation and also all the goods and services are will be available to its people and so on. So, that is why the governments uh, have liberalized these economies. Political and social issues very important for businesses. So, business is not just business. So, you have to worry about the societal issues that you are causing because of the business and for example, when you are doing the foreign direct investments that is when the money has to come inside, whether money has to go outside of the country and also people from, from other countries need to work for you. You require visas, you require permits, you require uh, foreign exchange, you have to follow foreign exchange regulations and so on and similarly social issues. If you start giving jobs to outsiders just for whatever reasons because they are more efficient because they have more skills or something then the local people will try to get into hesitations because they think their jobs and the whatever is due for them is being taken by taken away by others. And another thing is if you take a country like India you have 1.2 billion population and out of which 400 people, 400 million people they live in urban areas and 800 million people live in rural areas. Now, rural areas have poorer connectivity than urban counterparts and rural development is largely in the hands of the government. In other words, if you want to develop roads and uh, the telecom infrastructure and the aqua infrastructure and so on or any uh, 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 any SMEs, small and medium enterprises and so on, the government has to do it because the private partnerships will not work there yay and private companies are much more afraid to get into the rural areas because yay infrastructure is low and the population is not very well, so very well educated to understand the implications of the, the government. So, if you look at the emerging markets here is, is this something which I took from uh, from Wikipedia. You have uh, Brazil, Chile, China, Colombia, uh, uh, Czech, uh, Czech Republic, Egypt, Hungary, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Mexico, Morocco, Peru and so on. These are some, some countries which are the list, but the list gets updated every year. So, you need not have to take this seriously, but this is a representation of what are the emerging market countries. So, there are basically two kinds of emerging markets. The first group of consists of countries such as Mexico and China and Eastern Europe which are in the periphery of industrially advanced countries such as North America and Western Europe. 
for example, Mexico is on the border of United States. So a lot of people, since the Mexico is an emerging market, a lot, of, a lot of companies in the United States set up factories in Mexico using the NAFTA FTA, the North, North American Free Trade Agreement. This one, they will establish factories and use the Mexican manpower and the resources that Mexico has to basically produce products cheap and they send it across the border to buy trucks to the United States. So that's the kind of first group of countries that they do. Similar is the case with the Eastern Europe countries. But there are second groups which are primarily independent production and consumption spaces like China and India. Now this, in these countries production is oriented predominantly towards domestic market and these requirements are met by local production. Now whatever the whatever they are going to produce for the local market they are going to export. So this is one of the principles of, uh, uh, of global trade where you know countries which are which have high local markets are the ones who are basically exporters of goods. So that's what is the what is happening for the second group. So the first group just produces products for export. The second group produces products both for local consumption as well as for export. But suffice it, we should mention that both in China and India have special economic zones and other kinds of places, regions inside the country where goods are produced only for export. But these goods are also produced inside the country and not outside of the special economic zones so that they can be used by the local population. So amateur markets will be next font of innovations, this one. That's because each week nearly one and a half million people move to cities, almost all of them in developing markets. China and India are seeing five times labor productivity growth as they move from agrarian economics to become manufacturing and service powerhouses. So it's known that uh, uh, China is the manufacturing hub and uh, India is the IT hub or the back office of the world and so on. So basically because of this the labor productivity if you compare the labor productivity from agriculture to uh, to manufacturing to uh, services then it, it is increasing several folds and they are becoming powerhouses. By the end of the decade roughly 40 percent of the world population will be middle class which is 20 percent today. So what is middle class mean? Middle class means that these are people with uh, high, high incomes and they spend more on transportation, education and uh, and food and other healthy food and so on. So it becomes that these emerging markets as they become more middle class oriented then there is going to be the industries which is like food industry, the retail industry and the education and other services uh, they need to be upgraded. In the next decade, emerging market economies currently suppliers of low cost goods and services will become large scale providers of capital, talent and innovation. I mean this is a hope that since the economies are growing at 8%, uh, 6%, 6%, whatever. So the emerging market economies, they are basically at the tail end of the supply chain. That is they produce low cost goods and services and the components and so on. But Soon, because of the increase in the middle class and so on, they will become providers of capital. That means they can they can become MNCs as well as talent and innovation. So this is already happening in some of the countries. So to tap these new markets, organizations must reinvent business models, innovate new products and services. So how do you tap an emerging market? What are the kinds of innovations that you need? Is it the same thing? that you do in advanced countries? The answer is no. So what are the kinds of products and services that I should do? And how do I make my company more uh, uh, blockbuster industry? Or how do I make more money? How do I get more, make more brand orientation? How do I 
uh, make my product uh, the best product in the market. These are the kinds of things that one should think of. So, what is innovation? So, we define the emerging markets and what they want and so on. Innovation is search for and discovery of uh, development and improvement, adoption and commercialization of new products, processes and new organization structures and procedures. So, everything is new is innovation. Let it be a new product like a cell phone, like a, uh, uh, a PC, like a laptop or anything is is a new product. It can be a new service like IT service, it can be like search is a new service that is provided. Advertising using search is another service that, that comes in and so on. There can be new organization structures. Previously people used to have uh, hierarchical structures for their companies. Nowadays people are talking of orchestration. In other words, you do not want anything, but you basically manage uh, the orchestrate all these activities by having connections, not power. So, you may not have any authority over the others, but there you, you basically use the market power to uh, make people collaborate with you and so on. So, these are the kinds of innovations that uh, we are talking. I will define the innovations in the ecosystem framework, which is a much broader perspective than the innovations that usually people talk about. People usually talk about innovation of products and innovation of processes. But there are other innovations like government deregulation is an innovation. Anything that leads to a block button, bluster industry is, is an innovation. But it is also important to note just an innovation is not enough. Like you have a product innovation, but the history is full of examples where products which are very good, useful, but the companies can manufacture it but they could not market it and so they have to leave them and some others have taken up uh, lay, taken it up later. So, basically that is the innovation is just not a definition, but it is a process. And another thing people should remember since we are talking of innovations in emerging markets, one cannot solve emerging market country problems with the same ways of thinking that countries have used to solve them, other countries have used to solve them. You know, for example, if you want to have a uh, energy efficient car in the United States, that is different from an energy efficient car in, in the US. Energy efficient car in the United States could be electric cars, if you want to reduce the use of oil and so on. But then uh, in India, electricity is expensive, it is not available and so on, it could be a different source. In Russia, it could be oil is oil is very cheap, so it could be diesel, and so so people have to look at uh, their own solutions. For example, the ch the small car in India, people the big companies like have started their com marketing their comp their cars, the highly fuel efficient cars, although they are big into into India, but they were not successful until they make a small car using Indian components and so on. So, basically it is important that you look at the countries, uh, each country as a different one, take the culture, take the social groups and the habits into account while designing uh, the new products. So, what is successful innovation? So, we need a wider innovation policy. Traditional Science policy is rooted in science discovery, invention followed by commercialization of new products and services. So, if you talk to people what they do is they have a scientific discovery and invention, uh, they patent it and it follows by commercialization. And if it is a, if it is a pharmaceutical product, then what they do is they test it with various people and then the, the clinical trials along with uh, the products and all are submitted for, for clearance and uh, the new products uh, then are commercialized. But a wider innovation policy is needed in emerging markets. So, is the product has to be new, supposing you, you are looking at uh, an emerging market with uh, 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 some services like tele telephone. 
Now, telephone services exist in, in other countries and telephone cell phones exist in other countries. But if you want to bring the cell phones to an emerging market like India, then it is not enough if you just bring those telephones and then try to sell them here and set up a network. We will see that it is much more is needed because the government is regulated and if you want to have a cell phone for $500, that is very expensive for India. And if you want a cell phone with videos, audios and so on, then that is not needed here. So, what, what is the market like in India like? 800 million people, they have 7th grade, grade or less and they want something to talk and hear. They can, they are intelligent people. They can talk and do business talking. They cannot read or write. So, for such people, you require the technologies are different. It has to be audio visual technologies. And uh, so, basically, you have to look at it is a new product, but it has to be marketed and it has to be much cheaper because if you have $500, that is very expensive in India. So, basically, you have to have uh, the, you have to take care of what are the local conditions and introduce this. And the product need not have to be new to the world. It need not have to be an innovative product. A cell phone, there is no innovation in a cell phone. But what you have to do, you have to innovations come in manufacturing a cell phone for a lower cost by using standardized components. So, that is the kind of innovations that are needed in emerging markets. Innovations in management, for example, outsourcing is an innovation. Instead of doing at home, you outsource. Innovations in institutions like policy, regulation and governance, they need to be incorporated. For example, the history is full of examples where deregulation of the airlines, deregulation of telecom uh, and several deregulations have created to blockbuster industries, private industries. So, like uh, the, the uh, so, so many air, airlines have, have come in in the United States as well as in, in India, Jetire and so on. There are several uh, telephone companies have come in like Airtel and others. So, but there are innovations also to, due to convergence. For example, the finance with mobile as well as co-evolution of co-evolution very, very important. So, an innovation by itself may not be very good. A cell phone, a financial innovation like you can transfer money through, uh, through a cell phone, that is an innovation. So, it is a convergence of two fields. One is the finance uh, services as well as the telephone services. Uh, and the and the cell phone as well as coevolution it is not just enough to have a product uh, this one you have to basically have resources for a manufacturer of the product at affordable prices and you have to have the government clearances for those kind of products and you should be able to deliver it to your customers so whenever you are direct, you are looking at uh, manufacturing a product and patenting it you should also look at how innovatively you can deliver that particular product and what are the government institute regulations that you require. If you do not require any government clearances, that is fine. But most, most cases, you require government clearances, but how do you get them? And also, what are the kinds of resources that you need? Highly skilled labor or high uh, power? or is it uh, telecommunications infrastructure. So, you have to basically look at this, this uh, uh, the other elements of the ecosystem so that things can co-evolve. In other words, it one the, anything cannot survive by its own. So, wider innovation policy is much more than just the drug dis discovery and commercialization. It is, it can be a new discovery or it can be uh, new to the market kind of thing. You are available somewhere else, you are bringing it into this country and 
to during this process you can make several innovations in the business models in in management in the government regulations as well as you can basically do convergence with other technologies and so on science technology engineering regulations and management this is called this term framework contribute to innovations all contribute to innovations and the evolution coevolution of all this is important for getting this so let's uh, look at the innovations that created uh, the blockbuster industries so these are uh, for example uh, the products uh, like nano and uh, video games <coughs> cell phones search engines ipad uh, wikipedia for example you have the search engines because of the search engines you know you can get almost anything and you know, people it's a library by itself if we go to google or google scholar you can search for all the papers that others have written you need not have to uh, sometimes you may have to subscribe you can do online subscription and so you need that the the library the physical libraries are basically are getting a, a bit because of the search engines of course wikipedia is like encyclopedia uh, which is referred very widely and so on and of course there are video games there are cell phones and the search engines is is the biggest thing that has happened in recent times because ed, uh, the libraries advertising and are all basically being replaced by these search engines you have ipod basically uh, for music ipad for uh, all kinds of things it's a computer it's a, it's a cell phone uh, it's a music player all integrated into one and a textbook or a, or a magazine anything you can download and read that so it becomes a, a, a once one uh, destination for several things that uh, you want to enjoy so all that you have to carry is put everything your presentations your uh, reports uh, your bank accounts everything in the ipad and uh, you can you can safely travel on this so there are of course services like email retail uh, facebook social networking like and then solar power there are all these new services that have come of course well, all of us know how much email has revolutionized and people have have thought that the the uh, the postal services which will take letters will disappear and also the uh, people have predicted that the fedex kind of document uh, transfer as uh, is also getting a hit but it's it so happens that also the another thing is the newspapers newspapers printed versions are getting a, a hit because uh, the, you know everything is available all the news is available in one form or the other in, in a customized fashion uh, to the subscribe to the subscribers or to the viewers it's almost free so that's where uh, you you are getting services which are replacing the newspaper e retail you can order a uh, telephone uh, you can pay your for your telephone services uh, using this one you can order your uh, airline tickets uh, bus tickets you can order your train tickets everything through uh, the email or through the web and of course the facebook is one of the things that has come recently that is the uh, this is a social medium but person to person where you can network with all your friends share photos share everything with them of course solar power is the one with uh, the oil prices increasing and also with uh, the concerns of uh, the governments and the people on uh, the uh, ghg gas gases the solar power has become uh, quite uh, 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 prominent nowadays so we have uh, say new technology solutions on this to redesign the services for example the water power gas construction banks education these are all service networks which were designed several decades ago but if you want to make them they redesign them say water network with sensor networks with the smart meters 
and if there is any leak somewhere anywhere then you know automatic detection and then it is confirming it to the maintenance uh, to the staff where the leak is and how it is to be filled and all that similarly with the power gas and, and construction uh, banks and education. So all these services need to be designed for example in the banks you have ATMs now uh, basically which use the, the, the several automation technologies. There is the material uh, automation where you have to insert your, your card then it will automatically find out whether you are the owner and once you have the password then it will search for your account and find out you have the money and the money is delivered here. So the, there is the material, there is the information, there is the control and also there is the, the machine to uh, person that human to machine interaction that is when you insert the card you it is easily insertable uh, into, into the machine and also the machine interacts with you so that and it also machine finally gives you the money. So the, there are there are four kinds of automation that are involved the material information and as well as the the human machine interaction are all automated in a in an ATM machine and of course there is the control aspect here whenever if you type the wrong password or if you the money does not exist in the ATM or something then it is going to be indicated saying that uh, sorry we cannot give you this money. So new technology solutions are basically taking uh, the, the forward taken forward new business models for example containerization earlier earlier it used to be a brake bulk in other words you put it in bags and then put it on the ship but now you have standardized 20 foot by 20 foot by 20 foot containers and you put them all whatever material you have whether it is full or not then that container is identified with the materials it has so there is standardization of transport and of course this has to standardize the container has to move from the factory to the ship uh, to the port from port to port as well as the port again back to the warehouse. So there are several things which needs to be standardized of the, depending on the size of the container. One is in the shipping, second one is in the in the transport, third one is the, is the, uh, the forks and other things at the port where the container is located or stored. And of course outsourcing has become so common with the global globalization and that is an innovation. And you have BPOs, uh, business process outsourcing where you have people across the world anywhere in the world who are monitoring and dictating what should be done in in the other part of the world. This can be I gave an example of uh, the trucks of Penske uh, basically how they are executed the truck the, the transfer of materials from a supplier in somewhere in one state in the United States to Detroit by the trucks of Penske which is a logistics which is a freight uh, forwarding company and that basically uh, shows you how a BPO can execute uh, BPO is, is Genpak in India and uh, the, the all the transactions are conducted by the BPO staff here. You have foreign direct investment that is the sell direct in other words earlier any of the sales used to happen through either distributors and retailers or some brokers but now can you sell the items directly to the customer. Well this is one of the innovations of Dell and where Dell was selling uh, the computers, their their pieces directly to the this one, I sell direct. But of course, e retail, ATMs, cloud computing is one of the innovations we are going to talk about. This one of the biggest innovations now. Earlier, if you want to set up a company, you have to have your computer systems, uh, all your data is stored in servers and uh, other uh, other equipment and interconnection and all that. But then you know in other words if you want to start a company having all this computer hardware software and all that and is going to be a, an expensive proposition particularly for startups. 
So what people are doing, you have a cloud where basically it's a, uh, it's a service. You basically connect to the cloud, store all your data and you pay per use. In other words, depending on the gigabytes of star, uh, data that you have stored and the amount of time you have stored. So you can pay. This is like you pay for, uh, uh, for storing uh, some of your, uh, your goods in inventory in a warehouse. It's a similar concept. It's called pay per use. But of course, there are other, uh, this one like, uh, uh, PPP, which is public private partnership. Instead of one single fellow, the government doing everything, you know, you have partnerships with the private companies. Orchestration. Orchestration is where you don't want everything. You just orchestrate. You you take responsibility for the functioning of all the all the this one and so on. So instead of um, this one, you can do uh, you can sell items. eBay basically is an auction site where items are sold uh, uh, on the on the web. There are other you know industries like inter uh, uh, industrial clusters. These are special economic zones in China, freight corridors, new universities. You know, for example, there are several innovation new new universities which were created to uh, to support certain industry verticals like IT, like uh, the university, like skill training centers, and new logistics and infrastructure, digital delivery. For example, Amazon sells on the web and it has all the products which they, you make them, the books and other kinds of things, you deliver them on this. And they are basically Suez and Panama canals, as I told you yesterday, it saves thousands of kilometers of travel distance because of the creation of these, can these canals. So these are all new logistics and IT infrastructure that has happened. And of course, the government regulations, as I said, the patents whether it is a product patent or process patent, the government has to decide. Deregulation of telecom and airlines, the value added tax, green regulations are another one that, that is going to impact the industry very well. In other words, how much GHG gas is per vertical, free trade agreements between two countries, and then special economic zones, PPP, WTO, the membership with the World Trade Organization, new labor laws, for example, uh, labor laws in terms of their wages, in terms of the holidays they get, in terms of how to their exit. In other words, if somebody is not doing well, or you, the, the labor laws may not allow you to, to fire them. But will they, will they, this, this entry and exit strategies for the labor, they are all, is it possible to change them? These are all could be innovations that, that can create this one. So, what is a successful innovation? Basically, a successful innovation acting on the creative ideas to produce products and services that make tangible difference in their use. That is a creative idea. And innovations leading to commercial success are of interest in both developed and emerging markets. And blockbuster industries are generally a result of coevolution and convergence of several innovations. See, one should understand one single innovation in a product or service may not lead you to a market success. To basically get that product, manufacture it, take it to the market, make it acceptable to the to the to the community, to the uh, customers, that takes the uh, but that takes a lot of actors needed in this. So if you want to create a blockbuster industry, this results of co-evolution of several things and also convergence of several innovations. Several innovations can be combined together in several technology as well as uh, in other uh, ecosystem parameters to get into a blockbuster industry. There were several innovations in recent times that have revolutionized the way we live the way we communicate, the way we work, and the way we spend our leisure time, right? So, they are basically the TV, the cell phone, and so on. So, what is the innovation framework here? The innovation framework is that you have the service chain ecosystem. This is the basic ecosystem framework. 
and you have the service chains or supply chains, you have the resources, you have the institutions and the delivery service infrastructure. So, there is a basically an investment climate and flow evolution. So, for the service chain for any innovations, this is the innovation investment climate and there is a co-evolution. In other words, if you want to make a product or a, or a process and if you want it to succeed, you require resources. These resources could be skilled manpower or uh, it could be uh, some uh, uh, product resources and you require government clearances and social acceptance. You require finally whatever your product or service you have to make a delivery and you require the delivery service, service infrastructure. Sometimes you may have to have innovations in this to deliver your product. For example, to deliver a low cost airline you may require deregulation. You, without that help you will not be able to uh, do it. You may require uh, the, uh, the several spare parts, the petrol and other kinds of things available for a low cost airline. And you also have sufficient delivery mechanisms for airline tickets as well as the gas and other kinds of things. So, what are the kinds of innovations in the supply chain network? So, in the four things I am just going to give you a list, a very quick list. We are going to get them into detail in the next lecture. So, product and value chains are low cost high quality blockbuster products like nano video games and so on and designing products for efficient logistics, modularization, process standardization, distributed manufacturing like JIT, TQM, procurement, new technology solutions like uh, what I said like uh, water, power, gas, construction banks will be intelligent and smart and market channel, supply chain visibility, joint inventory management and so on. And new business models like outsourcing, BPOs, FDI, sell direct, e-retail and PPP and so on. Very quickly these are all the kinds of kinds of uh, innovations that uh, you require in the in the supply chain network. And if you look at the institutions, the government regulations like process or product patent, deregulation of service industry. VAT, free trade agreements, new labor laws, competition act, land acquisition act, etc. So, there are the green customs of perishable goods, trade, hygiene, regulations on packaging, formulation, pricing, procurement like APMC act. I mean this APMC act is, um, uh, is a is an act which basically prohibits the farmers directly selling to retailers they have to go through uh, an intermediary called Mundi. Essential Commodities Act, Minimum Support Price Act and so on. So, there are several acts in the agriculture which are basically affecting the retail in agriculture, social factors, labor unions and so on. So, we look at the products, institutions and the delivery. In the delivery you have for example, we talked about supply hubs, cross docks, postponement and so on, shared services like containerization, A teams, clouds, orchestration and so on and cold chain, packaging, sensor networks for, for visibility, delivery with bad infrastructures, distribution backbone and then also in, in addition to the hard infrastructure like cold chain and so on, we have soft infrastructure like trade facilitation, E approval, E letter of credits and so on. So, basically in terms of the delivery there are so many things that can be done. Now, if you have a product to make that product a blockbuster industry and how to make it acceptable to all the people, you have to look at the delivery. How are you going to deliver this product uh, to the people. If you want to make a digital delivery then you need to have the resources like uh, the uh, communication networks, the email and the search engines and so on. So, basically does your community have those? So, you may have to pro provide that kind of thing. For example, for containerization which is a, a simple thing like instead of having bulk products, exporting bulk products, you have put them all 
uh, in a container, in a 20 foot or 30 foot container and then send them across. To make that happen, it took several innovations, several where you had to make the ships bigger, you had to make the, uh, the trucks carry those and there should be equipment to put this heavy 20 foot by 20 foot, 20 foot container into uh, uh, the cranes and other kinds of equipment which can carry these heavy loads and so several things had to need to happen before the containerization took took place and in countries like India containerization is not a very popular mode of transport even today. So innovations like in resources, the financial resources, research institutions and universities product development and testing laboratories, creating new industrial clusters, special economic zones, talent and so on. There, for example, new technology solutions as we talked about uh, earlier. So what, what we are saying here is that, that you have all the four elements, there, there is a list of uh, innovations that can happen depending on the product that you have in or a process you have in mind, you have to basically look at the coevolution as well as convergence. Convergence refers to fusion of technologies in two fields to generate innovations and commercial opportunities like the fusion between cell phone and banking sector. You could, you could do transact several things online. So that is a fusion there. And the use of one industry principles fundamentally change opportunities available within the other. For example, you have transportation industry, add IT industry to that, it becomes logistics. Now what is logistics? Information replaces inventory. If you do not have IT, if you cannot communicate with other people, your, your among communication among partner is difficult, then what happens? You have to keep a lot of inventory. Now, if there is supply chain visibility, if you know when your shipment is coming almost surely, then you do not keep the inventory. Supposing your production starts tomorrow 9 o'clock and there is a delivery made today at 6 o'clock, almost surely, then in such a case you do not keep any inventory. You take the truck directly to your factory and without inventory, you can load whatever, unload the, your truck near the factory and then start using it for, for this one. So that is what happens by combining both transportation and industry, manufacturing plus logistics plus trade liberalization plus outsourcing is a global supply chain. So basically it is the combination of all this, finance for IT plus is equal to internet banking, ATMs, online money transfer, online trading and so on. So coevolution refers to adaptive response of one species to genetic change in other species which itself becomes genetic. In other words, you have vertically integrated uh, uh, enterprises, you know how to respond to them, how to control them, how to govern them and so on. Now you have globally distributed enterprises, so you should be able to now manage them and now evolve various structures, the innovations, the risk, how to calculate the risk, how to mitigate the risk and how to govern the whole system using this. That becomes a part of the coevolution like in the species. So basically if you look at uh, the global manufacturing, as I said several times before, uh, modularization of products has led to uh, outsourcing and outsourcing has liberalized the economies and internet has enabled inter uh, error free communications, ports, airports have been developed to enable transport of freight and contract manufacturers and third party logistics providers have proliferated and you have globalization has become the genetic order of manufacturing and service industries. So it is a kind of globalization is a kind of coevolution that has happened. So if you want to look at uh, uh, this in a diagrammatically, you have in earlier days the supply chain is products produced and integrated locally and you have resources vertically integrated localized enterprises which are the resources are there and institutions are local manufacturing plus controlled export and you have delivery service mechanisms, paper communications, truck transports are being local markets. 
Now you can see the coevolution here of all this on all this you have from products produced integrated products to modular global production networks and that is made possible by globally distributed resource networks and uh, that is you can you can basically use the uh, other countries resources to manufacture your products and institutions have changed from local manufacturing controlled export to free trade enabled global markets and paper communications have changed to internet enabled 3 peer serving global markets so it's the convergence of all these forces that has led to or the GSM, whether this coevolution, whether it evolved instantaneous coevolution is not possible, but one thing lead to the other and once this is successful, then you get into, you get into a, a big this one. So that is how what coevolution is. So to conclude this lecture, we are talking of emerging market in innovations. They are to be socially responsible, environmentally friendly and audio visual technologically advanced delivering high quality products at affordable prices in accessible locations to their populations. Now each of these adjectives is very important, socially responsible because uh, you should produce the things what are needed at their prices, environmental friendly you should spoil, you should not spoil the environment during the process, audio visual because people do not know how to read and write, they can speak and intelligently and make decisions, so it has to be audio visual, it has to be deliver high quality products, quality should not be compromised but affordable prices and they should be accessible. If I am in a village and if you provide this in a, in a city, I had to go to the city and spend more mind going to the city than for the, uh, the, the, the goods. So, you have to be make it accessible to this. Coevolution of innovation and resources delivery, government supporting policies and in supply chains and convergence of technology need to be orchestrated. So, basically one, one should look at how complex is innovation here. It is not just the product or process or something. How do you make it work and make the product reach the customers and make it a blockbuster industry. Thank you and then we will consider in the next lecture.